Hey, welcome back to the channel, my fellow weather junkies. I'm your host, Greg Majeski, your personal weatherman, bringing you the weather without all that social media hype here on your Thursday, September 19th, 2024. Let's take a look at what we're tracking here for today as we're looking at the potential for some active weather along the Minnesota-Wisconsin border. Could see a few tornadoes in that area with a pretty strong cold front moving through that region. We're going to talk about Canadian warmth. Uh, yeah, we're looking at above normal temperatures big time up into Canada. That could have an influence on you know when we may see a cold shot here across the continental United States. We'll talk about that in greater detail as well. And then we're going to take a look, obviously, at the Gulf. Are we looking at a hurricane or are we looking at a tropical storm? A lot of variables still there since we really don't have a system just yet. We'll talk about that in greater detail as well. Now, before we get into all that, I do want to thank the new subscribers here to the channel. It's great to see the channel growing and moving in the right direction. And if you're the 50% out there who haven't quite yet subscribed to the channel, uh, please help us out. Come on board here. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And if you enjoy and like this report, please give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. It does help with the YouTube algorithm as we continue to draw all the best audience possible here and grow this content for you guys. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at the current satellite imagery here across the continental United States. We got some residual that leftover tropical moisture here across portions of New England and some damp weather across Boston here for today. Here's our pinwheel up here. This is what's going to set off our thunderstorms here across portions of Minnesota and into Wisconsin. But that's going to trail back all the way down toward Oklahoma as well here for later today. Not too bad out in your west. Got a weak system here across portions of Nevada and, and California. Even a little snow falling up there in the higher elevations as well. And a few showers down toward Florida here to begin our day. Current surface map looking like this. Again, this is our big main system here for today with that active weather expected from Minnesota stretching all the way back down into Kansas for later this afternoon. Got a few showers and a few rumbles of thunder out there right now uh, to begin with, including some not too far from the Des Moines area here for this morning. Looking at your watches and warnings, again, just a little fog there in South Georgia. Here's some uh, winter weather advisories uh, out here into California. Some gusty winds here. And we could see some tornado watches again in this zone or severe thunderstorm watches here. Uh, stretching from um, areas of Minnesota, Wisconsin, all the way down here uh, toward the middle of the country. We'll talk about that in greater detail in a second. So we are getting a little bit of rain here north of Des Moines, up near Dodge City, seeing some rain, seeing a little bit of lightning in here as well, near Boone, Ames, and uh, kind of heading over Interstate 35. Going to be a little bit of a wet commute as these storms continue to move off toward the east, about some 25 miles per hour here for this morning. Our weather city of the day is actually going to be Boston, Massachusetts. It's going to be cloudy, <clears throat> a little damp out there for this afternoon, a little light rain around. We'll look for a high temperature this afternoon of 73 degrees. And if you'd like to nominate your city as the weather city of the day, and you don't have a good webcam in your area, or perhaps something here on here on YouTube, take that link and post it down below, and we'll potentially use it for a future broadcast. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the latest from the Storms Prediction Center as we're going to be looking at our day one, two, and three outlets here. As we're looking at uh, day one here, obviously we're talking about the middle of the country. That's where we're going to be kind of hot and heavy here for today uh, with that potential for that active severe weather. That yellow, that is your slight risk as that cold front is going to be plowing into that zone right through there and setting off just a general thunderstorm threat here across the Carolinas. A little bit back over here toward Nevada and California and, you know, some down here in Florida. But uh, again, the middle of the country is going to be our main bread and butter here for today. Let's go ahead and break it down by the categories. We'll look at your tornado threat here. Again, we're running about, uh, you know, about 5%. That's that area there in brown. We're going to be watching very closely here uh, for late this afternoon. Right along that border coming all the way down toward Iowa. That's our zone. You got that 2% just there in the green going down, even down toward Kansas in northern portions of Minnesota. But that's the hot zone here for today. Obviously, with the thunderstorm threat, you're going to have some hail. That's going to be there as well. You notice in the yellow there uh, for Minnesota stretching down toward Iowa with so the hail threat, large hail possibility there uh, running about 15%. And the wind threat as well, that's a little bit to, uh, further down uh, along that frontal boundary, uh, stretching again from areas of Minnesota all the way back down uh, just about to the Oklahoma uh, border there uh, along that boundary with some of these isolated thunderstorms uh, uh, being a little bit of a menace here by late this afternoon and then going into the evening hours uh, for today. Let's take a look at your day two outlooks. Looks like things begin to settle down here just a little bit. Just got that one little pocket there of marginal severe weather there uh, across the portions of Indiana and in through uh, Illinois. That is for your Friday. And just a general thunderstorm threat out here in the west, obviously South Florida, and a little bit out here in the Plain State, stretching back toward uh, 
areas of New Mexico here for your Friday. And then your day three outlook looks like we get a little pocket there uh, down toward areas of, say, New Mexico and down toward Texas. We got a little marginal risk right through there. But uh, generally, just a general thunderstorm threat here uh, across portions of New England, South Florida, and uh, stretching back into Colorado and Utah. And that'll be kind of a wet pattern going out of Saturday and going into Sunday, where we could see some uh, some heavy rains kind of uh, progress out into the plains. In fact, as we take a look at the three to seven day hazards outlook, you notice that big green spot there uh, from Denver heading out in over toward Iowa. We could see some potential for some heavy rains coming through there. Uh, with that next system uh, kicking on out here as we go into late into the weekend. So that's something I'm going to watch uh, pretty closely here for this upcoming weekend. All right, recapping once again that uh, severe threat for today. Slight risk. We're talking Kansas City, Missouri, Minneapolis, Minneapolis uh, St. Paul. We're talking about Des Moines. We're talking about Overland Parkland. That's in that slight risk. That's in the yellow. Marginal includes Oklahoma City. We're talking Omaha, Nebraska, Tulsa, Wichita, Kansas, and Springfield, Missouri here in that green zone as that frontal system traverses the middle of the country. All right, now we're going to go shift out into the tropics. We're still pretty active. we got three areas that the National Hurricane Center is tracking on their latest seven-day outlook here. Uh, of course, we've got the couple of zones out in the middle of the Atlantic. I'm not really worried about these out here. Uh, that's uh, If anything does form, those will probably stay out at sea. Of course, everybody's talking about this out on social media, that orange area there. Uh, looking at something potentially developing here. 40% chance of seeing something, uh, tropical depression to form in the next seven days. And then where it goes next week, a uh, lot of uncertainty on that right now. Let's take a look at the latest satellite imagery. Again, we've got the couple, those couple areas that are out there in the Atlantic. Uh, we've got two of them out here. And uh, the one to the right, got a little more thunderstorm activity there. But again, nothing to be too concerned there. And we're just waiting for a sea of things developing down in here. Uh, as something should form down there in Central America and begin to move northward. And that's what we'll be watching there as we go into next week, where we may get a depression to form. And then there's a lot of uncertainty on where this thing's going to go. You're going to see a lot of things out on social media, folks. Please take it with a grain of salt because uh, there's just a lot of uncertainty. Now, what I'm concerned about is the fact where this stuff is developing. It is some very warm bath water. It's some very warm waters there. Again, tropical features, they feed off the warm waters of the Atlantic and the Gulf uh, 80 degrees or higher. You go 85 degrees and higher, you're talking about octane fuel here for these systems to feed off of. And we're definitely seeing some octane fuel uh, in this zone here for these tropical system, this one in particular, to possibly feed off of as we go into this upcoming weekend and into next week. That is for sure. All right, let's look at the ESANS and SAMA models. Kind of a, a blend of the European different models here as we're looking at some different things. I want to go ahead and stop this right there at the end, okay? So we're looking here at the end. You got several features, obviously, that we're kind of looking at on the ESANS model. Of course, you got these two systems out here, which again are going out toward the Atlantic. Can't go worry about that. We got a new tropical wave out here, obviously coming off the coast of Africa to watch as it's coming across. But it's this one here, which is all over the map, man. We're talking, uh, it gets a little cluster there across uh, portions of the, the Yucatan and stays out in the, in the southwest um, Gulf of Mexico, out there in the Bay of Campeche. There's some that take it into the northern Gulf. So there's a lot of uncertainty on where this system is going to go. This is a 10-day outlook on this uh, going out until we get toward the end of next week. So again, uh, just keep it tuned here. I'm going to keep you updated on everything that's going on. Let's go ahead and break this down. I do want to look at the latest model forecast on the tropics here. We're going to first take a look at the European model. I want to show the diversity on this, folks, so you guys get an idea of what we're talking about. So here is the European model here. I'm going to go out 10 days as we're looking at this uh, sea pressure anomaly, as we're going to wait for something to develop. You notice we go through uh, Sunday, it's still quiet. Nothing's developed through Sunday. And then as we go into next week, we start seeing something, starting to see something start to come together in that, that zone right there. So it's going to, the European is definitely slower on something developing here uh, uh, with this system. And then it kind of takes it into the Bay of Campeche. And again, this goes out 10 days and we're seeing something forming in there. So it looks like maybe a tropical depression or a weak tropical storm there in the Bay of Campeche to go out 10 days going into Saturday the following week, okay? So that is the European model. Now, I do favor the European model. It's more consistent. It doesn't go 
go bonkers uh, like the GFS model does. And this is what you're going to probably see out in social media circles here for today. Again, you're going to see this uh, in a lot of locations. This is the, the zero Z run for the GFS. It's forming something here further off toward the east. You see the low pressure system developing here by Tuesday, okay? So it's a little bit further to the east. And look what the what the GFS American model is doing with the system. It blows this thing up significantly, very quickly, becoming a hurricane as it's uh, kind of making the pass between the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba as we go into your Wednesday, late Wednesday night, and moves this thing up into the Gulf of Mexico as a major hurricane as we go into this uh, upcoming week and going into the following weekend. So I'm gonna take this out to 240 because we're again, we're comparing and model to model here. All right, so you're looking right there, boom, that's a big major hurricane sitting there in the central uh, uh, Gulf, of, uh, Gulf of Mexico as compared to the other model, which was showing a tropical storm. So we got, uh, you know, we got a big hurricane here in the middle of the, middle of the, of the Gulf of Mexico, or we have a weak tropical storm down here uh, waiting to get kicked out out of the Bay of Campeche. Again, we got very diverse models. What's going to happen, we got to wait until we get something to firmly develop. So again, keep coming back here. Look for my hurricane shorts. I'll keep you updated on this. But again, a lot of unknowns with this uh, with this system. If I was to take this beyond the 240, just to give you an idea what the GFS is doing, it's cutting across Florida Panhandle here beyond that. Again, this is going beyond 10 days. So I'm not a big fan of showing anything beyond 10 days. But for this thing, it just shows it does kicking, kicking on out as we go toward October. Now, there, there's a couple of differences. I know folks can remember Hurricane Michael and things like that in the Gulf Coast states. Uh, the Gulf, Northern Gulf of Mexico is cooler than it was, say, back in 2018 with Michael. So if this thing progresses, what I think will happen, if we get a hurricane, it'll strengthen. As it moves into the Northern Gulf, it'll, it'll, it'll start to weaken, but it'll still could potentially be a major hurricane if the GFS holds true. But I'm going to be honest with you, I do favor the, the European model solution most of the time. So, or something in between. Maybe we get a, a strong tropical storm or a weak minimal hurricane. But I don't know if we're going to go bonkers like the American GFS model is doing uh, with that right now. All right, let's go ahead and talk about uh, the weather over the United States here. Again, we're looking at the European model here. As we're looking at the jet stream way up in the atmosphere to kind of track our weather systems here across the nation. And we're going to be watching this thing again, watching this energy move out of the West. So we got to, this is this energy here. Remember, we we're showing you that possibility for some heavy rains here across the middle of the country. It's this feature here that's going to cause it. All right. That's that, that as it kind of ejects out of the Southwest. That's what's going to cause the, our stuff. That's going to go into this upcoming weekend, uh, going into Saturday and Sunday. So as this thing's kicking out here on your Sunday morning, uh, we could see some pretty heavy rains here across portions of Colorado coming out into the plains. Uh, as the, the hazards outlook is looking for as we go into this upcoming weekend. All right, as that thing kicks on out, again, we'll watch that uh, traverse into the, up into the, uh, the areas of the Great Lakes. So as we go into your Monday late in the day, we'll see some rain, a few thunderstorms up this way, as we've got a pretty good trough here, uh, digging down across the Western portion of the, uh, of the United States. All right, we'll continue to watch that trough kind of dig in there. We got another little piece of energy kind of pinching off there across the Southwest. So that'll leave it a little, uncertain, little unsettled across the four corners. Got a little bit of a trough here uh, coming through with a cold front there into New England as we go into Wednesday. That's going into the 25th uh, there in the middle of the week. And then we'll see this thing uh, progress on out. And you've got a nice little, not a nice little cutoff feature here uh, for me here uh, uh, late in the day going into Friday uh, as we go into the 27th. Okay, that's what's going on with that on the 27th. And then we'll take sound light at the end of the 10 day run and it kind of pulls on out again. Uh, we'll see what happens with the tropics because that's going to be the variable here uh, that uh, could have an impact on uh, where the overall jet stream pattern may go with the influence of that uh, tropical system. So we'll see how that changes. But through the weekend, I think we're pretty set and solid there. Uh, of that feature kind of ejecting out of the four corners and seeing some rains there. So let's take a look at this. For, first thing I do want to take a look at is, again, we're going to focus in here on the, the areas of the Great Lakes. So you're looking there, again, we're watching about this feature here as we go into uh, going into tonight into tomorrow morning, uh, where we could see some potential there for some active severe weather in that zone. That's where the tornado threat is going to be the highest there as that kind of moves on out. So uh, we'll watch that closely uh, as we go throughout the day, late today. So this is by late this afternoon. That's when things will get kind of robust. So by the zero Z, uh, this will be this zone. That'll be looking at the potential there for the possibility of a few of those being 
uh, isolated tornadoes. So if you're in that area, again, make sure you stay weather aware and make sure you have that uh, your weather radios and your apps and everything ready to go with that for today. All right, let's go ahead and continue to watch this as we go and track this. Uh, that system moves off toward the east, again, bringing in that rain threats across the areas of the Great Lakes as we go into the day on Friday. And then we watch that next system may begin to eject out as we go into the day on Saturday. You see in the rains here stretching from Iowa back through Colorado. This is where that heavy rain threat uh, was showing out there on the hazards as that uh, next system begins to eject out, out of the Rockies and kind of lingers there even into Sunday. So Saturday and Sunday, you're going to see some pretty good potent rains here covering the same zone. So it's a prolonged rain event, not a short one. And that's why the heavy rain threat is of that possibility there uh, for those two days. And then it finally starts to kick on out into the Midwest as we go into off toward the, the west there. Uh, go ahead and continue this here again as we watch this uh, kick out into the Great Lakes as we go into your Monday. So a little stormy weather here across the areas of Wisconsin uh, going into Illinois, Indiana as you go throughout the day on your Monday with the wet weather there. And as we watch that system begin to kind of pull up into Canada, we'll see another uh, round of rain here break out on the tail end of this front uh, coming in through areas of Texas and Oklahoma. Uh, that's going throughout the day on your Tuesday. Now, as that system begins to pull on out and we'll see that thing, it kind of lingers there across portions of Texas. We see that next system kind of plow in through uh, portions of the Great Lakes. And we get that cutoff little feature. You get a little cutoff low here. Uh, kind of setting up right in here. Uh, that's what's going to be setting off the, the rains there across New England as we go throughout the day on your Friday. And then obviously we're going to be watching this feature down here if the European holds. What happens to this feature down here in the Gulf? Does that become a tropical storm or is that becoming something a little more significant? And if it does, which way is it going to go? Is it going to go into Mexico or is it going to get pulled northward into the northern Gulf? Stay tuned for more updates on that. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the rainfall totals here. Again, we're expecting that heavy rains there in the plains. So let's go ahead and take this on out here. As you can see, a pretty good robust rainfall as we're looking at the next 10 days. Again, stretching through uh, areas through Nebraska, going through Colorado, Kansas, Missouri, some pretty good hefty rains and some pretty rains there across Texas too uh, over the next 10 days. Southeast looks pretty quiet. Not gonna get much rain there, that's for sure. Pretty quiet across Alabama and Georgia. Uh, but uh, that's where the heaviest rains. And then we got that cutoff feature that'll bring in the rains here across portions of, of New York and down toward Massachusetts and Connecticut and Rhode Island. And boy, you got a lot of moisture down here just showing up very nicely there on the 10 day as we're watching all that tropical moisture. And where is that going to go uh, beyond the 10 day forecast? Is it gonna be something that we're gonna have to watch as a as Helene or, or as Isaac? Depends on what, which one of those storms gets fired up first as we go into the end of next week, going into the next weekend as we're wrapping up the month of September. Now, I was talking about earlier, I kind of teased this. I said, you know, kind of watching uh, Canada, I'm looking at the temperature, 850 temperature anomaly thing. And the one thing that's been catching me kind of consistent is see how warm this is up here across Canada. Uh, it looks like the cooler features have been kind of stretching here, kind of coming out of Alaska and Siberia. But what, look what happens here when I go over the next 10 days. All right, you get these, these shots that are coming down out of Alaska and you see it kind of cooling down there with the cold front uh, cutting through as we go into this upcoming weekend. But look how warm it is up here across Canada. So an unusually warm anomaly there at 850. And why that is concerning me, it means we're not going to get a chance for any real cold air to kind of build up there. There's another big warm burst there as we go toward the 25th and 26th. Again, staying very warm, cooler up in Alaska and the cooler shots have been kind of coming in from there, but not building and coming in obviously from, from Canada. So what that is concerned me is it means maybe as we go into October, we're gonna stay with a relatively warm pattern here as we're just not gonna get any real cold air to kind of build up across uh, Canada to kind of come south. We are getting these cool sh cooler shots coming off the, uh, the Pacific and coming across from Alaska and Siberia from that direction, but not over the continental pole. So, I'm suspecting we're not going to get anything immediate as far as a cool down across the lower 48 coming out of Canada as we go into the month of October. So I just wanted to highlight that. All right, let's talk about temperatures here. We're going to look here at this. This is your 10 day average here as far as temperatures are concerned. Uh, you're going to see areas there along the coast here. You're looking at fairly average temperatures, not looking too bad there at all. But a lot of red in here. The Midwest looking at areas uh, five to seven degrees above average. The South, maybe three to five here as we go through the next 10 days. Uh, as we go ahead and shift to the central portion of the United States, 
Uh, you're also seeing, obviously, above normal temperatures here across areas of Minnesota and Wisconsin running 5 to 8 degrees there. Looks like uh, 7 to 8 degrees above the areas there across Texas and Oklahoma and Kansas. A little bit below average here out in the Intermountain region. In fact, we can go ahead and shift out here, again, looking for the next 10 days as we look out toward the west. Just a, even this is a little bit below. It's not by much. We're talking by one or two degrees here. But overall, it looks like we're going to see temperatures uh, staying pretty much above average here as we look at the next 10 days. So I wanted to show you the model there. And then we'll, we'll compare this to the latest uh, climate outlook as well here uh, for comparison's sake. So here you go. This is as of yesterday, the latest outlook from the Climate Prediction Center going from the 24th through the 28th. Near normal, obviously, with the cloud cover again that run along the coastal areas was looking fairly close to normal, but a big chunk of the country looking above normal with the temperatures there. And that'll continue right into the 2nd of October uh, with above normal temperatures for the bulk of the country, some cloud concerns keeping it in normal down here. And again, as I was showing you, Canada, I don't know if I want to see any real big uh, uh, cool air intrusions coming down out of Canada as long as the 850 is showing those above normal temperature anomalies across that zone going into October. Again, wet here, depending on what happens in the tropics as we go through the 24th to the 28th, as we're looking there, dry here across the high plains back toward the Intermountain region here as we look at the 24th to the 28th. And then finally, the 26th through the 2nd, again, watching the East Coast, watching to see what happens in the tropics here going through the 2nd. But the bulk of the country looking at below normal precipitation expected as we turn the calendar and go into the month of October. So uh, looks like we're in store for some... Uh, Active weather, we got to watch uh, very closely here for today. Obviously, we're looking at Minnesota area in Wisconsin, some a few isolated tornadoes there. Then this weekend, we got to watch that uh, next system coming out with some heavy rains from Colorado out toward Iowa. So we got some concerns to watch with that. And then obviously, the tropics. We got to watch and see what happens with the tropics. I am concerned that when we get something to develop in that part, I'm not talking climatologically speaking in the past. They could usually become pretty robust hurricanes. Now, as I've said, the conditions in the northern Gulf with uh, wind shear as well as the cooler Gulf water temperatures up along the coastal areas there, I don't see a repeat of, say, Hurricane Michael back in 2018, where it stayed unusually warm in the northern Gulf. That's not the case this year as we've had a chance to cool off. So, again, just be careful out there in social media. You're going to see some of this stuff start to fly a little bit. Uh, I'll let you know when I think it's going to be a major concern anywhere along the Gulf Coast, Texas to over to Florida. We really don't have a, a real feel on exactly where this thing's going to go. But once we get those thunderstorms of fire, once we get something to, to finally lock in, we'll have a better idea of where that track may go. All right, that is your update here for your Thursday. Again, I appreciate you guys checking us out. And if you haven't subscribed and you'd like to make this as a regular feature in your YouTube feed, all you got to do is please subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you learn about your content. And if you like the report, again, give me a thumbs up. I do appreciate y'all's assistance. Okay, that's your update for now. You guys be good. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.